Happy Friday, Helldivers. It is almost the weekend, and we have some massive news coming out of the Helldiver community today, and I cannot wait to cover it with you. This is actually really crazy. It's a bit of a hit to my ego. Do you remember that major order? It was 2 billion bugs we had to kill, and we did it in 13 hours, and collectively, we were all like, heck, yeah, man, we freaking rock. Well, guess what? It was all a lie. That's right. There happened to be some kind of a glitch in the matrix. Maybe it was the automatons messing with us or something like that. But that actually ended up not being accurate at all. So what happens is it takes your group count, your group kill count total, and then it multiplies that by how many people you were playing with. So if you had a full squad and everybody had, I don't know, let's say a 500 kills per member of the squad, that's 2,000 kills, right? No, that's two, four, six, eight thousand kills in one run that is why we completed that mission in 13 hours and not to not the projected six days or whatever it was so now that has been fixed so we are not going to have an easy time with this next major order unfortunately we have failed the one that we were working on over the week and i think that has that has a little bit to do with the backlash of the sony thing people just weren't playing as hard maybe there's a little bit of burnout happening who knows but we lost that mission. And now Meridia, the super colony on Meridia, has taken over completely and multiple planets have been taken from us. The newest major order is now to retreat back to the automaton side. And here's where things get interesting. The new major order for this weekend is music to my ears. We get to kill two billion bots. And it's a little messed up, though, because we are going to then collect the body parts and machinery from these dead bots and use them to build the anti-tank mines, which is a new stratagem where if we complete this major order, that will be the prize at the end of the tunnel. Uh, and then we get to take those anti-tank mines, and I'm going to assume that we're going to go back to the bug side and use it over there and use the shrapnel and body parts of bots to kill all of the bugs. And that's pretty freaking cool. Now... On the 9th, the newest war bond dropped, the Polar Patriot war bond, with several different guns that we covered on Tuesday's show, and also some armor types, and a couple other things. We were all very excited about this. However, overall, the community has kind of given it a meh reaction to all of the new weaponry and new builds, and that's kind of interesting. The only thing that seems to have come out unscathed and has been given the thumbs up across the board is the submachine gun pummeler. And that's mostly due to its staggering capabilities. You can shoot something all the way up to even a charger on the bug side, and it will stagger it to the point where it almost glitch freezes, which kind of puts me in a situation where I think this is probably going to be on the nerf chopping block in the next balance patch. They're going to take a look at that and say, why is a submachine gun stopping a charger? That can't stand. You might want more powerful weapons, but who knows? If they're too powerful, they're going to get taken down a notch. But besides that, Everything seems to be given a kind of like a, eh, everything's okay. The incendiary grenades happen to be getting a good thumbs up from across the board. People are enjoying those as well now that the balance over time patch has come in and now fire actually does damage once it's being dispersed, uh, even if you're not the host of the game. So that's pretty cool as well. Looking forward to using those, using those things over the weekend. I do want to mention people's issue with the new rifle the tenderizer uh, versus the liberator they've had a side-by-side -side comparison online and by all accounts on paper the tenderizer is actually not as good as the original gun you get upon purchasing the game the liberator i have some thoughts on that and i have got the comments of somebody in our discord chat who kind of broke everything down in a way that i think is really interesting so stay tuned for a second we're going to cover that now, if you break down what's happening with the Liberator versus the Tenderizer, the Liberator has six magazines of 45 rounds for a total of 270 bullets. The Tenderizer is 10 magazines with 35 rounds for a total of 350 bullets. Now, the thoughts of one of our top members in our Discord, who is, uh, I believe, a Galactic Commander now, pushing level 100, these are his thoughts on this. I'm quoting his chat here. It says, it's a direct alternative to the Liberator, which is what primaries are going for. You sacrifice a small amount of rate of fire to gain 30 plus bullets. And with a slower rate of fire, the gun ends up being more accurate, which makes you more deadly and end up using less ammo. 
it's actually an upgrade over the Liberator. He's basically saying it comes down to poor ammo discipline. So that's basically what's going on with the weapons in the new Polar Patriot War Bond. It's an interesting idea. I'm looking forward to people using the tenderizer on the bot side now that we have this new major mission because, well, it's a lot different. Fighting bots is a lot different than fighting bugs. I personally prefer bots, so I'm curious if this lower recoil, more damage, bigger magazines will help versus the Liberator, which is a great gun for bots, but you have to really be accurate. So I think it's going to be leaning more towards the not spray and pray, but the hyper accurate burst mode, taking a couple of headshots and moving on, which is by and far difficult to do, especially when you're being hoarded around by a bunch of freaking bugs. It's not that easy. You, if you have to reload a bunch of times, that's why people love the sickle so much is because you can not have to reload as much. Or if it's a spray and pray shotgun, you can just unload in a group of bugs and take them all out. These tenderizers and the liberators, these assault rifles are not really made to take down hordes of bugs. They're made for pinpoint accuracy. So I think they might be being used incorrectly by some players. We'll see. Now, speaking of buffs and, and nerfs from the weaponry and stuff like that from the dev team, uh, the CEO of Arrowhead has talked recently on social media about not wanting to take the fun out of the game, which as for me personally, I can only talk about the Eruptor. That was my number one gun when I first got it. That thing was awesome. I was able to support my team member members from a f way far away, taking down Devastators and all kinds of crazy stuff, groups of troopers and everything on the bot side uh, with just one shot. And it was amazing and it was a ton of fun. And I felt like I was actually really able to contribute to the team, even though I was far off on some rock somewhere. Uh taking pot shots from really far away. I felt like I was able to kind of clear the way for my team members using that Eruptor that has since been kind of taken away from us. And I don't feel like the Eruptor is quite as good as it used to. However, I have seen videos online of a comparison of old versus new on the Eruptor where it kind of seems like it's doing okay now that they've buffed up the explosion rate by another matter of, I think, 40 was what the patch notes said. So we're going to have to see how that plays out. I might play with it a little bit more this weekend, seeing which we're going to be on the bot side, which is my jam. Uh, and I'm going to find out, let's see how good versus bad it is now after this patch update. I will definitely be talking about that on Tuesday's show after playing for the weekend. Now, finally, I did feel like we needed to cover the Sony controversy a little bit more. I'm really wishing that we could just push this behind us and move forward and play the game and have a good time. Unfortunately, there's still one major loose end happening. The countries that have been locked out of the game, the 177 countries that can no longer purchase the game, that has not changed. Originally, I had presumed that it was on Valve's side because Valve didn't want to sell a game to people that they couldn't play if they don't have PlayStation. But it turns out that that might not be the case. And it's been over a week now, and these countries still can't get it. Now, from what I understand... If you've purchased the game prior to the PSN controversy, you can still play it. There's no issues there. It's just you cannot buy the game now if you live in those areas, which is a major problem where who knows how many people just cannot buy this game. That's a big bummer. I want more people to play the game. I don't know why Sony wouldn't want that. But it seems to be another situation where the developers of this game, the CEO of Arrowhead, they are fighting for the game to be released in these countries. For whatever reason, it's a stagnant process right now. And I, I'm i leaning on it's probably Sony trying to drag their feet, which we have to stay vigilant because there's a possibility. And I'm not saying this is going to happen, and I don't have any proof that this is what's happening. I just, I'm speculating here. It seems like maybe Sony's playing the slow game. Maybe they're trying to wait it out and wait until people forget about the controversy or at least somewhat not care anymore and then reenact the PlayStation networking, linking with this game, hoping that maybe they can deliver the news a little bit easier and get away with it a little bit better next time. So that is a possibility. Stay vigilant. Stay on top of Arrowhead. Stay on top of the situation on Twitter. Follow the people on social media that keep up with this kind of news and make sure to just hold Sony accountable to this stuff. Um, I was under the impression that this would be settled over the weekend when this controversy was over. I figured Sony or, or, or Steam would probably just be like, hey, uh, we're good to go. Let's just release it. Fine. You win. Uh, but 
Sony's not going to go down that easily. They're not probably going to be taking this. They're they're going to be taking this a little personally, I think. And I, my gut is telling me they're going to come back at us. Who knows? It could be two months, could be six months down the road with another PSN linking thing. Or maybe they'll try to shuffle it under the bottom as part of the update. And you won't even notice. I don't know. I'm not sure. Hopefully none of that happens. I just want more people to play this amazing game. That's it. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Have a great weekend killing those bots. I will be on the front lines this weekend for sure. This is my favorite time to play. I love taking down these bot factories and these, these jammers and the devastators. These guys, this is my jam. This is where I thrive. So I will be on the front lines for sure this weekend. Catch us live every single week. We're popping in and out. We usually do, do late night uh, late night live streams. So uh, we're on there between 10 and like midnight uh, Pacific time. So if you're on the East Coast, it's like 2, 3 a.m. But if you're a night shift worker and you like watching games at night while you're at work, check us out. We do like those games. We love having the the, the chat pop off and, and uh, cheerlead us as we mow down these automatons. It's going to be a lot of fun, guys. Thanks for watching the channel. Really do appreciate it. Make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.